Born a Crime by Trevor Noah Summary From 4-Minute Books Written by Luke Rowley And read to you by John B. Lean One Sentence Summary Born a Crime will inspire you to make great things happen no matter what circumstances you're born into by revealing the story of how Trevor Noah grew up as a mixed child in South Africa on the way to becoming an adult. Favorite quote from the author Quote Whilst my mother couldn't give me access to the world, she at least made sure to let me know it existed. A kid cannot dream of being an astronaut if he does not know about space. Trevor Noah You've seen him behind the desk of The Daily Show, but you might not know that talented comedian Trevor Noah has an inspiring backstory. Trevor was born in apartheid South Africa. As if that wasn't hard enough, his very existence was a crime because he was the child of a white father and a black mother. His mother had to go to extraordinary measures to protect him. Through poverty, violence, and abuse, Noah's mother committed to make a better life for her son. In his book, Born a Crime, Stories from a South African Childhood, he details his life. From his isolated upbringing as a curious and mischievous boy, to discovering himself and his new freedom as a teen at the end of apartheid, you'll see it all. Trevor Noah's funny and heartfelt stories of his life in a dangerous time, only equipped with humor and wit, will give you a whole new appreciation for him. Here are the three greatest lessons I got from this one. 1. Trevor's existence was a crime, but his mother went to great lengths to protect him. 2. Post-apartheid South Africa had its own struggles, as Trevor struggled to find who he was. 3. His wit and ability to fit in with different groups helped him in his business endeavors. Let's learn from this inspiring story. Lesson 1. Apartheid South Africa made Trevor's existence a crime, but his mother made sure he was safe. One of the laws during apartheid, a period of segregation in South Africa, was that there should be no interracial sex. Authorities would imprison men and women who broke this rule. They were even known to look inside windows to make sure no illegal relations were taking place behind closed doors. Noah was born into this world in 1984. His father was a white man of Dutch descent, and his mother was a black woman of the Shiosa tribe. This made his very existence a proof of the crime they had committed. Because of this, his father couldn't be seen around him, and his mother had to be careful. If authorities came around, she would have to put him down and pretend he wasn't her child. He spent much of his childhood alone, but it didn't bother him, as he enjoyed playing by himself. Though he grew up in poverty, his mother had the determination to make a better life for him. She taught him many languages and made a point to teach him English, something that she knew would give him an advantage when he was older. Trevor's mother also wanted to make sure he didn't have to pay what she called the black tax. This was the money spent by black kids to make up for their parents' poverty, which passed on to each generation, making it impossible to escape. She spent what little money she had on books for him, and a lot of time teaching him how to navigate the racist world they lived in. Though he was smart, Noah was a rascal. He often got himself into trouble for his love of knives and pyrotechnics, he recalls getting spanked by his mother for his mischievous behavior, but he knows now it was coming from a place of love. Lesson 2. Apartheid ended when Noah was coming of age, and it proved difficult in its own way. In 1991, a year after Nelson Mandela was freed from his life sentence, apartheid finally came to an end. But though it was over, a whole new range of problems came. At the end of apartheid, there came a power struggle over who was actually in charge. The two tribes, Zulus and Kyosas, fought. Many people died. Though things were dangerous, Noah's mother was strong. She tells the story of one time when they had to take the bus to church because their car wouldn't work. The buses were extremely dangerous because of the turf wars being fought over the routes. On their way home, the Zulu bus driver and Noah's Kyoso mom got in an argument. When the driver told his mom he would, quote, teach her a lesson and sped up so they couldn't get off, his mother knew what she had to do. As they slowed down at an intersection, she forced the door open and pushed out Noah and held his little brother in her arms as they jumped out. From there, they ran quickly home. He found the best way to navigate post-apartheid Africa was to learn many languages. 
He knew several languages, and this helped him many times. One time he overheard an approaching gang of Zulu boys planning to mug him. They thought he was white, but when he suggested in Zulu that they attack someone else, they quickly backed off. Now before we get into lesson number three, I'd like to give a quick nod to Reading.fm, the amazing people behind the audio for this and all the other videos on our channel. Reading.fm is your personal blog radio, where you can listen to your favorite articles and essays from around the web, narrated by real, human, professional voiceover artists. Use the link below to sign up for free and start listening to more summaries from 4-Minute Books, as well as your favorite blogs right away. Okay, now let's dive into lesson number three. Lesson three. Noah's natural wit and ability to blend in with different types of people helped him in his young business endeavors. Noah may have been considered colored or a mix of black and white, but he thought of himself as black. He spoke several African languages and grew up among African relatives, so it was no wonder he gravitated toward the black kids. But he didn't limit himself to one group of people. Instead, he found a way to blend in with different types of people. This skill helped him become the tuck shop guy that sold treats after assembly. His customers were all kinds of backgrounds, and he learned to navigate between nerds, jocks, and rich kids easily. He also developed and improved his famous comedic skills. As he moved around to every group, he found that they welcomed him as long as he cracked a few good jokes. Other business endeavors extended to selling bootleg CDs with the CD writer his rich white friend had given him. Then he moved on to be a DJ for parties and had bookings all over town. He had a few brushes with the law as a rebellious teenager, but these taught him to be cautious because he saw the odds stacked against black people he saw in jail. Hey, this is Nick, the founder of 4-Minute Books, and if you're struggling with this last lesson we just discussed, I think I know the exact book that'll help you master this idea and implement it in your life. Luckily, we've already summarized that one too, and in this next video, we'll show you exactly how to take the first step and get to the next level in just a few minutes. Click through to the video and let's get started.